Hey guys, Brendan Productions here, and um, welcome to Java Tutorial Part 15. Now this isn't really an official tutorial part, actually I don't even think I'll be naming it with an official tutorial part, um, but this is simply a sample project. And um, the outline of this project is um, the user is going to go ahead and enter a bunch of numbers. They're all whole numbers, so that means there's no decimals. And uh, what we're going to do is count up those numbers and then put them in categories. Uh, so these categories are going to be as follows. We have 1 through 10, uh, 11 through 20, 21 through 30, 31 through 40, 41 through 50, 51 through 60, 61 through 70, 71 through 80, 81 through 90, and 91 through 100. Now this was actually an assignment in my computer science class and a lot of people were having difficulty with it. So I decided that I make this quick little tutorial to show how to do it. So the first thing that we're actually going to need to do is, hold on, I'm just going to um, see if I can get it so I can see the console here. Okay, so oh, uh, maybe once I run it the console will pop up. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually take the all of the integers that a user types in and store them in an array list, which was actually discussed in tutorial part 13 or 14, I believe. Um, so what we're going to do is um, let's start off this project. So this was created by Brian and Milton, Brandonia Productions, 2012. So the first thing we need to do is to actually create an array list to hold all the values that the user types in. So we're going to say public static array list, um, and it's going to hold integers because these are whole numbers, and we're just going to call it array equal to new array list of integers. Bam. Um, and now we're also going to need an import statement up at the top. Import java.util.arraylist. So now that we have an array list to actually keep track of um, what numbers the user types in, we're also going to need something to read the numbers the user types in. So we're going to do this with a scanner, java.util.scanner. And um, so we're going to create public static scanner reader equal to new scanner. And we're going to send it the stream system dot in. OK. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to start our application with public static void, public static void main, um, send in the correct parameters, and we're going to tell our user to um, enter some numbers, and these numbers are going to have to be one through a hundred. So. When we start this application, uh, it creates an array, it creates a scanner, it asks the user to enter a bunch of numbers, and um, yeah. So the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to create a new integer equal to the number that the user types in, right? So we're going to say int input equal to uh, reader dot next int. So this simply gets the next integer that is typed into the console and it stores it into an integer variable called input. And um, what we're going to do is when the user actually types 0 as an integer, we're going to know that um, the user is done typing in numbers. So we want to keep reading these numbers and then adding them to this array uh, until the user types 0. So in other words, we're going to do that while the user is not typing 0. So we're going to say while input uh, is not equal to zero. So that means this loop will keep going until the user actually types in zero. But the problem is um, this only executes once and that's at the beginning. So this loop will run indefinitely unless we get the user's input inside the loop. So we're just going to say input equals reader dot next int at the end of the loop in order to ensure that we're getting the uh, proper numbers. So inside this loop all we're simply going to want to do is um, every time the user inputs a number, we're going to add it to the array. So array.add, and we're going to type in input. So this is done, actually. Uh, it's pretty simple. As you can see, if we run the project, uh, 
uh, enter a bunch of numbers, 1 through 100, 0 to stop. So we're just going to enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 80, or 87, I guess. And then we're going to type 0. And once we press enter, we can see that the application has actually terminated itself. Now, one problem is we didn't check if the number was 1 through 100. So we're actually going to add another line here saying if uh, input is greater input is greater or equal to 1 and input is less than or equal to 100 we are going to uh, do this otherwise we are going to system out print line number must be 1 through 100 so what we did here is we're checking the input and if it is greater than equal greater or equal to 1 and this is the Java symbol for a, and uh, the input is less than or equal to 100 we're going to go ahead and add it to the array because the number is okay um, and then we're going to go ahead and get the next number and we're all good so what's gonna happen is um, as soon as this while loop is done as soon as the user types 0 the code is going to go here so right down here right under this little arrow thing and what we want to do is we actually want to uh, read back to the user uh, how many numbers they placed in each one of these categories and we're going to want to read it back into in a um, slightly organized manner so we're going to use a little loop that'll do this for us so so the first thing we need to do is start our loop so we're going to say for int integer i equal to one and um, as we can see here the loop needs to end on 100 or something of the sort so we're going to go as long as i is less than now as you notice here there are one two three four five six seven eight nine ten categories so what we're going to do is we're going to make it as long as it's less than or equal to ten categories and then we're going to increase i by one uh... every little loop so you'll see what i'm doing in just a second here so what we want to do is we actually want to create the first number in our uh, little category here so we can do this by typing in int first num equal to now immediately i is going to be one and um, we need it to equal one uh, but then we're going to need it to equal eleven so w what i'm going to do in order to simulate this is i'm going to say i minus one uh, times ten plus one so what we're going to do here is we're simply stating so i starts off to be one so we're saying i minus one times zero or times ten so this is going to be zero times ten which is zero and then plus one so in the first loop it's going to be one which is good and the second number which has to be ten at start is going to be simply i times ten oops equal sign and this is not first num this is supposed to be second num I'm saying stuff but I'm not typing it so now that we have the two numbers that actually need to go in our categories what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, to scroll through the array list and actually count how many uh, uh, instances there are in this category and for each instance we're going to display a little uh, asterisk okay so we're gonna create a little variable uh, an integer called count that'll keep track of how many we've currently typed so we're gonna say four and we're going to so we want to scroll through this array here and each element inside the array is actually an integer so for each integer and we're just gonna call it number inside of the array called array we're going to do the following so we're going to say if um, number is less than or greater than or equal to first number and number is less than or equal to second num number we're going to do the following 
So we're taking each number inside the array, and we're saying if it's greater than or equal to the first number, which in our first loop is going to be 1, and if it's less than or equal to the second number, which in our first loop is going to be 10, we're going to actually increase the count, so count plus plus. And um, yes. Now, before we actually scroll through all the numbers in the array, we want to actually write a little graphic onto the screen. So we're going to say system.out.print, and we're going to say first num, and then we're going to add a little through sign plus second num, and then we're going to add a bit of a space and a little line. So right here we're just printing out like on the first loop it'll be 1 through 10 just like we have up here it'll print itself out 1 through 10 then give a little bar for a spacer and yes so once we've looped around and counted all of the um, all of the numbers in this little section here we're actually going to display the amount that there are so we have how many there actually are in this variable called count. Now we need to display that many asterisks. We can actually do this with a for loop. So for int, let's call this one x, equal to 0. And we're going to go all the way up to um, count here, or less than count. And we're going to increase by 1. And every time that um, this loop triggers, we're going to system.out.print, and we're going to print a little asterisk. Now, the reason I'm using print on these two statements instead of print line is because um, what it's going to look like is it's going to go, you're going to be entering a bunch of numbers. These are not 1 through 100, but whatever. Then you're going to enter 0, and then it's going to enter this next line and draw whatever we're supposed to draw. So what it's going to look like is it's at first it's going to say 1 through 10, and then it's going to have a few spaces and a box thing. Now, we do not want the cursor to go down to the next line and draw the asterisks. What we want it to do is stay on this line and start drawing the asterisks here so we know exactly how many there are from 1 through 10. And then after it's done drawing the asterisks, we want to go down to the next line so we can make it say 11 through 20, some spaces, and then the number of numbers that you entered in that range. So. Um, after we go through and we actually print out all the asterisks, we're going to just system.out.println, and then the next for loop is going... Okay, see, so one problem here that is actually a common mistake is see how we're printing out the asterisks in this array uh, for each number? So we're going to get tons and tons of asterisks. So we want to actually keep this out of that array and put it below it. So once it's done counting all the numbers uh, in this range, we actually start printing stuff out. So this is going to be our complete little program. So let's go ahead and test it out. I'm going to press the debug button up here. And we're going to enter a bunch of numbers. Let's try entering 222. Um, while we get spammed with number must be 1 through 100, um, And that is because this is just constantly going. So we're just constantly getting the user's input. So what we want to do is we want to take this input equals reader dot next int and actually move this to the bottom of the while statement instead of in the if block. So it's constantly getting the new input. So let's try it again. And we're going to earn our 222. And as you can see, it now it just says number must be 1 through 100. So now we can start entering 1, 2, 3, 20, or 15, 69. And 87. So, as you can see here, see here, we have three numbers in the 1 through 10 category, one number in the 11 through 20 category, one number in the uh, 61 through 70 category, and one number in the 81 through 90 category. So let's uh, stop it and see if it did that correctly. And it did. So as you can see, we drew out this little contraption here, and we have 1 through 10, three asterisks, because we entered three numbers in the 1 through 10 category, uh, 11 through 20, we added 1. 61 through 70, good. 81 through 90, good. And this will work with an indefinite amount of numbers. So if we just type 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1
I know I'm getting some 11s in there, but that's okay. Uh, okay, I think that's enough. And then we type 0. It will actually give asterisks for each number uh, in that we entered. So this has unlimited possibilities because the amount of numbers it can store is really not limited on modern, com modern computers uh, because the amount of memory that this integer takes up is not that much. However, on older computers, this might be quite taxing to uh, store that many numbers. But this is all possible because we used an array list, which does not have a fixed amount of slots. If we used an array with a fixed amount of slots, we would pretty much be doomed because we wouldn't be able to um, adjust the maximum number of numbers that could be entered. So this is uh, the little program that keeps track of the numbers you entered and prints them out. Hopefully I explained it well enough. If I didn't, please leave a comment uh, that asks a question, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible on that. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys all have a great day, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.